What's up, sweaties? It's John Schnepp here. You're watching Comic Book Shopping. That's right, we're here at Meltdown Comics in Hollywood. I'm standing here with Chris Parnell and Sarah Chalk from Rick and Morty. The Rick and Morty fans are so hardcore. To hear how many people are into it is pretty awesome. What can they expect for season three? We're gonna go comic book shopping. You guys ready to rock? Ready. Absolutely. All right, let's go. You walk that way. All right, so tell me, what were the comics that you used to read when you were kids? Um, I liked Aquaman, Plastic Man, Flash. Those were big ones. Man Thing. Feel the fear of saying <laughs> whenever you touch people, they'd be like, ah, 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 the Man Thing burns. Yes. How about you? For me, it was Archie. Archie comics all the way. Wonder Woman. Awesome. I became quite obsessed with Wonder Woman. I think it was like a lot of Halloween that I dressed up as Wonder Woman. Well, how do you feel about the Wonder Woman, the, the, you know, not only the movie, but just like how big of a hit it is? I know, it's pretty awesome. I think it's rad. Right behind us, we've got a, a lot of Wonder Woman comic books and Aquaman comics. You know, if you like Wonder Woman, I would highly recommend George Perez's run. It's really a classic run. It's filled with the Greek mythology, and that's kind of how they based the film. Aquaman, I have no idea really what James Wan is gonna do, but I trust him. I know he's gonna add a slight horror element to it, because imagine like being like in the bottom of the ocean with weird creatures. You're like, you know, <laughs> hey, you're Aquaman. The oh, weird jellyfish, craziness. I have know? that dream every night. The weird jellyfish one yeah. or yeah. Aquaman? Yeah. Both. So Chris, you've gone a lot of years to Comic-Con. What's your favorite story? You know, it was, it was just being there, getting to watch an episode of a show with the mm -hmm. people in the audience and seeing their reaction to it because I watch it by myself or with my wife at home and to hear how many people are into it and hear them reacting live and all that is, is pretty awesome. Well, let me ask you both. I mean, you both have been in front of the camera as actors and you're also now behind the camera as actors doing voiceover. What's the difference? What's the benefits? What do you like best? It's a completely different experience. I mean, what I love about Rick and Morty specifically is that you get the script in your inbox. I'm just always so excited because you have no idea what's going to happen. I mean, we never know the arc of a season and you read about like the this crazy alien and the sentient cloud fart being and then you can't visualize what it's going to look like. You have no clue. Right. Even though you've um, read the script and you've done yeah. your part, all of it is brand new. All of it's brand new. So what would, what would Jerry and Beth do in a situation like this? You're at a comic book store. You just showed up. I think Jerry would be pretty excited. He'd, he'd be looking around at a lot of comic books. He probably wouldn't know them because he's not kind of cool enough to know comics. What do you think best reaction would be? Just super annoyed with you. Just yeah, like just super like that. annoyed. Just, like, just that. like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Get a job. This this is good because this is how Sarah acts to me all towards <laughs> me all the time. This is Sarah Chalk, everybody. Well, I've got some comic book recommendations for you guys. There's a comic book about horse surgery that I want to turn you on to, so come with me. Awesome. Hey, I did not know that there, there was a comic book about oh, horse surgery. Of course there is. Okay, so before we get into all this cool recommendation stuff, I want to ask you about how's it been to be a part of Rick and Morty? It's become a global sensation. What's that been like? A uh, nightmare. It's really been a nightmare. Um, being on a show that is so loved and popular, it creates a lot of pressure on us. Mm -hmm. Makes it really hard. It's been cool to be a part of something that is so beloved, and the Rick and Morty fans are so hardcore. Like, they know more about it and, than we do. Yeah, oh, definitely. I, I've been reading some of the fan uh, outrage over the eight, it's eight years now since season two and three, right? It's about, I think, eight years now. <laughs> eight years. Like, people are crying, there's right. fetal position, screaming. Yes. a lot of uh, screaming. So what bigger. can you tell the fans? What can they expect for season three? Well, we are separated, mm -hmm. which works very well for our real life relationship. Because yeah, sure then we can let all of our true feelings play out awesome. on the mic. Yes. Yep. Beth ends up really kind of discovering a little bit more about her childhood and why she is the way she is in this bottomless hole that will never be filled from having been abandoned at a young age. That's some heavy stuff. It's pretty dark. It gets dark. It gets <laughs> yeah, dark. It does get it dark. It gets dark. Between all that insanity, surrealistic laughter and comedy, right? Absolutely. Have you guys gotten a chance to read the Rick and Morty comic book that they've been publishing? No, they just sent one to me and uh, nice. I didn't get that interesting. <laughs> I would talk to your publicist. <laughs> I did get the spaceship. I, I got the spaceship. You got that. What yeah. the F? <laughs> well, you know what you guys are gonna get are some amazing comics. Let's get into some of the amazing comics that are here. Sweet. 
I absolutely love this comic. It's from Charles Burns. This one is particularly suited for you guys because you're into comedy, you're into surrealism, and this has both. It's funny and it's really dark and it's uh, it's great. Terms and Conditions, really weird title. It's actually when you open up your iPhone and you just have all of those terms and conditions that you have to agree to. That's what the comic is. The entire comic is just the text, but it's done. Every page is literally from a different style of comic book. So it's a good from, way to actually oh read God. the terms and conditions. And you can it, say you've read them all. You agree that Apple has the right, without liability to you, to disclose any registration data and or account information to law enforcement authorities, government officials, and or third party as Apple believes is reasonably necessary or appropriate to enforce and or verify compliance. That's more terms okay. and conditions than I've ever read. Okay, yeah. you can ever. read and we get it. Gord Downey, what did he do here? I have no idea. I don't know who Gord Downey is. Is that one Gord or two Downey? words? Gord Downey? Yeah, is that? Gord Downey. Oh, okay, it's not Gord the Downey. The most okay. incredible musician of all time. He's a huge part of my, my youth. The Tragically Hip. Wow. Yeah. yeah, but he's like a Canadian icon. This is beautiful. It is beautiful. All right, well, you're picking that up. Yes. You were talking about Archie earlier. Like, yes. This new version of Archie is simply fantastic. This is the afterlife with Archie, where basically it's Jughead, Archie, the whole cast and crew fighting zombies. Archie was my favorite, and my, my nieces and nephews are now super into Riverdale, so they're gonna dig this. When you see Riverdale, you're like, oh my God, they must have seen this comic book. Yeah. I mean, because it's really influenced not just by Twin Peaks, but definitely but, from yeah. this comic itself. You were mentioning uh, your kids uh, like Star Wars, right? Yeah, he's super into Star Wars. Everything is Star Wars. Let's get into some Star Wars comics. Oh, sounds great. Let's do it. I think your kid is oh, going to absolutely love this new version of the Star Wars mythology. It takes place right after A New Hope. Oh, that's so cool. Another one I have to highly recommend is the Darth Vader standalone comic book. It's just Vader and all of his evil in a cool comic. <laughs> so hopefully your kid can either go That's to the light amazing. side or the dark the side. side. <laughs> you get that choice. Oh my god, these are so cool. Here's the DC universe of Mike Mignola. This is all the stuff that he was doing before he went on to do Hellboy. Oh, that's awesome. So I think you'll get a kick out of this. It's like, it's all of the, the most famous Mike Mignola stuff. He worked on Batman, on Superman, a whole bunch of standalones. So, I didn't even know that. Bam, now that's you got awesome. it. Chris, you, you mentioned this comic, and I had never heard of it. I'm just a fan of Gauguin, and uh, they have made a graphic novel drawn in the style of Gauguin's paintings, and it's beautiful. Do you have any um, Neil Gaiman? He's such an incredible author, I can't, I can't believe it. Have you, have you uh, gotten a chance to read any of the Sandmans? Um, Sandmans I haven't done yet. Let's pick you up a couple. All right, guys, you ready to check all the comics out? Check them out. This is a stack of comic it's books. Whoa. Very strong. We got strong. our reading cut out for us. Thank you so much for all these recommendations. This is like the rabbit hole. So it'll be uh, 435.67. Thank you, Christopher. Ooh, mm. a... So much. All right, Thank you. let's get out of here. Good. So you've been watching Comic Book Shopping. I'm John Schnepp. We're at Meltdown. Thank you so much, Chris and Sarah, for being on the show and getting these amazing comics with me. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so like to read. It's been a blast. And definitely watch Rick and Morty season three on Adult Swim. Let's get out of here. All right. <laughs>